Last time we showed how to use the client credentials grant to generate JSON web tokens that could serve as bearer tokens for your APIs. And this basically lets you centralize all of your API permissioning in one place inside FusionAuth in a flexible manner that is standards based. So now we're going to take the next steps and allow external entities to call our APIs. So perhaps we're gonna start selling access to our APIs and we want to be able to know who is using our APIs and to be able to control whether or not they can use uh, certain APIs because perhaps you're at a basic plan, you only get read access to some of the APIs and if you're a premium plan, you get read write access. The first thing we need to do is actually create a new entity type. So we're creating an entity type of company and this shows some of the flexibility. You don't actually have to have any permissions associated with an entity, especially if they're the ones that are going to be making calls against other entities. They're not the target entities, they are the recipient entities. So we're going to create a company called Huli and a company called Pied Piper. So now we're gonna grant Pied Piper access to the Reminder API. The developers who work at Pied Piper can get access to the Reminder API. The developers who work at Huli, we're not gonna give them any access yet. So we've added Huli and Pied Piper. Now we're going to allow Pied Piper to read Reminders. or more precisely, we're going to grant the read permission against the Reminder API. The poor folks at Huli won't have any permissions at all. Now let's go ahead and demonstrate this. Again, on lines five through 10, we're getting different client IDs and secrets for the things that are trying to get permissions. And on line 14, we're asking for read access against the reminder client. So the reminder client ID is again, 072. Pied Piper's client ID, 3F7, Hooli's is 35B, and we need to find each of the uh, client secrets as well. Okay, so we have built up this script. We're going to show Pied Piper first. Again, let's just base64 decode it. So we can see we have valid permissions against the reminder API of read. If on the other hand, we use Huli's credentials, we get back a null token because Huli doesn't have the correct credentials. 
it has not been given grants against the reminder API. So this shows you some of the flexibility of the client credentials grant. You can use it to manage your own APIs internally. You can use it to very easily expose a client ID and a client secret that can be used to extend permissions to entities outside of your system. So if you wanted to start selling access to your APIs, you could leverage the same entity management structure. In the next episode, we will talk about how you can dynamically change the JSON web token based on information contained in the entity object. Thank you.